sell. I mean, it's just my indication is just sell. And um, yeah, maybe I'm wrong, but sometimes as a, as a, I, if I see a hurricane, I'm supposed to say it, but there's Hello everyone, today our guest is Bloomberg analyst and financial expert, Mike McGlone, who in this video analyzes the current market situation, the reality of the fears of a nasty recession, the chart analysis, stock market, Bitcoin and gold among various assets discussed and future strategies. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. The G20 an intergovernmental forum comprising 19 countries and the European Union, has planned to develop a common framework for helping all countries deal with risks associated with cryptocurrency investments. Under India's presidency, the G20 called for coordinated global crypto policies, a vision put forth by the country's finance minister, Nirmala Sitharaman. However, with multiple ecosystem collapses impacting investors worldwide, Sitharaman believes disparate reforms will not help address the global reach of cryptocurrencies. On the other hand, the previously struggling economy of El Salvador showcased the importance of an asset like Bitcoin BTC dollar 30,140 in reducing the impact of hyperinflation and dependence on the US dollar. One of the most significant lagging measures in the market that has only one way to go up and to go that's up in terms of the unemployment rate which means almost for sure recession and i don't like to say it unless it's factual um and there's um so that to me is and that number was kind of a meh number are uh, from stuart paul our chief economist who came on my we just had our macro call this morning it's always nice it's right before his quote was softening the labor market Cuts from the banking sector is key, and all eyes, all eyes are on small banks' propensity, propensity to lend. And that's a key thing that hit Friday. The key headline that I saw Friday as I was, I have to admit, some of us, like Dave does it for sure, but being an ex-hedge fund guy, just weekends are a time to catch up on all the reading of stuff I'm supposed to know. And the headline that struck me Friday afternoon that came out after the close was, Bank Crisis Drives $280 billion in Institution Money Flows. It's, it's not so much the fact that banks are collapsing, it's the money flow. It's just the key question is, there's a massive liquidity pool go that's pull going on it's accelerating and the key question you have to ask yourself is what stops it and in that environment we've had this pump in assets bitcoin's been the leading one stock market's been a leader one so it it made me um just a few things i want to mention that struck me this week in a headline i saw in the terminal it said bond market is is overplaying the risk of a deep recession. It's on my DI list, that one. Was, I deliberately ignored it until I dug in. And I'm sure Dave knows that. Sometimes you just see stuff like, yeah, no kidding. Um, and then I dug in, and it was one particular journalist covering one particular hedge fund type guy who was um, lamenting about how quickly yields have dropped. I'm like, that's what always happens in significant um crashes they're almost all simple mean reversion and that's all we're doing right now we're mean we mean reverted natural gas <laughs> it dropped 80 percent poof back to the cost of production we're mean no, no, reverting crude oil still going um and the biggest risk of all mean, re mean reversions is what you're seeing on the screens right now with the s p 500 hovering around that 4100 level and to me that's where everything is trickling down to that level as i see major um, lofty prices in bitcoin and in crude oil, and um, in bond yields, and everything is dependent on, and even copper. For them, those markets to stay at these levels, you need that stock market to not go down, to not do what it normally does when it gets the NASDAQ. It's now 10% above its 200 week, 200, I'm sorry, it's a 200 day moving average. That's the most since the end of 2021. That uh, might be a bear market bounce. So to me, that's the macro of everything. And as a macro strategist, I have to just keep my eye on that. And if that stock market goes down, everything falls, including Bitcoin. And Bitcoin just oftentimes leads. It just often doesn't go down as far. So what I started talking about about a year ago, the greatest economic reset of our lifetimes. And every day that goes by, what you just said to me is, you just said to me is just adding all fuel to that. Obviously, it's political. It's typical no reversion of biggest pump in liquidity ever that's dumping getting the macro but the political is part of it and then i look over in the little charts like i'm 
published this morning, I see the 200, uh, the 100 week moving average in NASDAQ rolling over. Last time it did that, the Fed was already easing aggressively. And it didn't give you a chance. Once it got back up to that level of the market, it was time to start buying again. But this time, the market's back up to that level. It's rolling over. The Fed's tightening. The economy's going to recession. What are you supposed to do? Sell. I mean, it's just my indication is just sell. And um, yeah, maybe I'm wrong. But sometimes, as a, as a, I, if I see a hurricane, I'm supposed to say it. But the thing is, I fully expect Bitcoin's outperform, uh, going to continue outperforming all cryptos. But 22,000 cryptos and things like Dogecoin and Shiba Inu with value, and that shows the inflation in the system, that needs to be purge that's just indicative of what happened in almost every major pump and liquidity we've had in the past up to the 29 crash that ended in you know 30 up to what happened to 2000 the, the internet bubble you got to get rid of that excess of, of liquidity and risk assets and excess of a speculation and dogecoin and Shiba are just nothing but pure speculation machines and then the, maybe the there's a hundred cryptos that matter and the number one is Bitcoin. How much we want to get in cryptos, I don't want to know too much. I don't know if we should get into much, but I just cannot see a picture. My view of the S&P 500 going to 3,000, dropping just yeah, see another another 25%, which is easy in a recession. I just can't see Bitcoin going up in that environment right away. Now, initially, gold will go down in the environment and then cover. And the only thing that should typically go up in that environment initially, unless the Fed's tightening, which they still are, is long bonds. Long bond yields should continue to decline, which as I see happening. It's already tilting that, that way. So to me, we're getting towards the real part of what you said. The Fed is so trapped, but they're trapped because they put themselves in the trap. They <laughs> waited way too long where they should have started easing it, uh, tightening at the end of 21 when the stock market started take, making new highs and they did not Now we're way too far past it. That to me is the lose lose. And I like to, in this conversation, say, okay, how are we going to get out of this? How are we going to manage our money properly? And why, um, what stops a normal correction in the equity market, which is almost the complete goal of the Fed to reduce the ability for people to buy stuff. And then by this time next year, I fully expect we're going to have severe deflation and the Fed can never, will never ease with the ease they have in the past because the lessons they've learned of too much liquidity and inflation. And this is what's different from every single Fed ease in the past, um, particularly during the 87 crash and particularly during when they started easing in SEP 2000. I'll end with this. SEP 2007, they started easing. PPI and Bloomberg Commodity Index were on clear upward trajectories. They're still heading higher. PPI peaked around 10%. That's finished goods. That year, PPI is now running 6% and crashing now. And the Fed is still tightening. And commodities are crashing. The Fed's still tight. That is a depression based on all the history of what happened during the Great Depression. They tightened when things started tilting down hard. And key, only one shoe's left, and that's the U.S. stock market. Housing market's dropping at a greater pace than it did in two, from the peak from 2006. The key thing that hasn't started dro dropping is owner's equivalent rent, which is CPI. Major lag, usually about six to eight months. The key question I like to ask myself, I just pulled up the Bloomberg Commercial Read Index, and it looks as bad or worse than it did in 2006 to the bottom to 2009. And the key question simply is you always ask yourself is what stops this trajectory? And putting, you know, focusing on a few trees in the forest misses the entire forest. That is rates are still going up from the Fed at the highest pace in history if you do like just log measure from zero and on a global basis. And everything is just starting to turn over in the macro. So to me, that's where the one key thing is we're going to wake up and next time we're going to have a call. We're going to say, yeah, oh man, NASDAQ or S&P was down 10% in a week. And that's usually how it happens. Got to drive everybody crazy. I mean, that's what um, most markets do. And then poof, it, it starts to trickle down. And I think that's the trigger. That's the final leg in everything you're saying. And unfortunately, we have, we're having this conversation, but it's that serious. And anybody who's still not buying two notes at 4%, I think is seriously um, missing out what the opportunity is here. <laughs> you're supposed to just say, thank you. Buy some safe assets and um, and just take everything else and in, in over an underweight. I mean, to me, that's what the, when when the tree was at five percent. What happened right after that? We had these little few little trees of banks going under. Now you're getting the forest, and the forest is burning, and the Fed's I mean, still throwing fuel on it. Um, that's the key thing I like to point out: is markets and charts will make you um, lose the the bigger picture sometimes. Um, at the wrong levels. And one thing I always like to do is like relative values versus moving average. So I pointed out the 100 week moving average in the NASDAQ has rolled over and the market just kissed it. And what's the Fed doing? Typically, almost every time in history, markets aren't about the economy, they're about the Fed, unfortunately. 
that's the umbilical cord the Fed's cutting. And they've made that statement indirectly, indirectly. It's the only time in history you're going to have a chance to finally uh, have, as some of your commentators say, I don't have to know the names of the Fed governors anymore. I can look at the fundamentals of the investment rather than what the Fed's doing. They're cutting that umbilical cord. And the only way to really do that is to have the pain in the equity market. So that ease that you need for the stock market to go up is not there. And it's not going to be there until the Fed, the stock market goes down, according to what I've, my interpretation of what the Fed's saying. In addition, then we have this recession going on and we have the history history of the Fed's never going to ease at the ease they have in the past. So all that stuff you learned about in the past is scary. So the lesson I like, I was just playing around with the 50-week mover and average versus the 200-week mover and average on the S&P 500. The 50-week mover and average is crossed below. People call it a death cross. It's about 5% below the 200-week. It's the most and typically pretty deep. And there's never any time in history, I, go, I think it went back like 80 years, where the Fed was tightening in that environment or within a day. They almost always started easy. That's the difference. It's the market's changed. Everything's changed. And we have these confluence of 100-year events kicking in. So I'd say be careful with the charts. And that's why I think I completely like that fact that the decorrelation of the Bitcoin, the key rem thing to remember, as we all point out, is when the stock market, the S&P 500, goes down with high velocity, which I think it will, everything's correlated to one. And this time it'll probably be bond yields won't go up this time, they'll go down. And gold will probably go up. That's what was the change last year that really made it worse. The key thing is when that starts, which I'm, if it doesn't, well, Glone's wrong, that Bitcoin will probably see pretty significant pressures, but we should see a lot more pressure and all the other cryptos, the ones that are just silly speculation and maybe flush them that. out eventually. Flush them out eventually. We all know we gotta get rid of that for this to be a legitimate space. Mike, I, and, I yeah. oh, go ahead, sorry, finish. No, you got it. I mean, it's probably good. Uh, it's a rent. So that, uh, that, that, yeah. that to me is a macro, but be careful. It's the key thing about charts now is that the lesson I've learned, it was, all, it was hard enough to do before. It was all bots and AI and algorithms. Now it's more so. And the key lesson I learned being a technician, people claim I'm a technician. A lot of times they say I'm an anti-technician. When I see signals that the majority, and Dave's laughing because when you see the widely yeah. watched signals, you see, I say I've watched right now in front sure. of me, I have CNN, CNBC, and Bloomberg. When I see something that hits the tape, Sometimes as a trader, my first influence is, oh, death cross. Okay, do the opposite. Because of once course. it hits the pop, yeah. So you got to be careful of that. So that's why I like to point out as people are saying, oh, we crossed above the 200 week or 200 day, it's bullish. Then that's usually the opposite. Yeah, to we, me, we've it's, seen it's, the fake it's, outs a thousand times. Yeah. 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 So here's, yeah. here's the biggest fake out in the history I'll, I'll warn you about. And that was in 1929. The S&P, the stock market dropped about 50%. It rallied about 50% in 1930 and then rolled down. And almost every single time the Fed starts easing, you get that bounce. I remember it in SEP 2007. And that oftentimes is the one you're supposed to fake. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.